Prosecutors in Colorado are facing much deserved backlash after they celebrated the injustice of a truck driver who just got sentenced to 110 years in prison for an accident he was involved in. Now let me give you some details about what this case involved and then we'll get to the prosecutor's celebration in just a moment. Now, there, this was a crash that happened in the state of Colorado in April of 2019. The truck driver was a 23 year old. He was driving a semi, Rogel Lazaro Aguilera Medeiros is the name of the truck driver and his semi truck uh, ended up crashing into stopped traffic on the highway. It caused a 28 car pileup, four people tragically died, six others were injured. And uh, he d was not under the influence of any type of substance. He passed uh, drug and alcohol tests. Now uh, he says, and this was not something that was contested. This was something that both parties agreed on. The brakes on this semi truck gave out. They, they malfunctioned, they were not working. And he said as he was on trial that he wishes that he would have like crashed into a wall and just taken his own life instead. He has a tremendous amount of remorse, he feels awful for what happened. Of course, he's apologized to the families of those who had tragically died on that day. But nonetheless, the prosecutors pursued a case against him and he was charged with literally dozens of charges. And the jury unfortunately found him guilty of six counts of first degree assault, vehicular homicide, 10 counts of attempt to commit assault in the first degree, two counts of vehicular assault, one count of reckless driving and four counts of careless driving. Now, what happened during the trial? Well, according to the Washington Post, central to the ensuing criminal trial was whether Aguilera Medeiros was responsible for a brake malfunction that caused him to ultimately lose control of the vehicle. A jury in October found him guilty on 27 counts, including vehicular homicide, and he was sentenced last week to 110 years in prison, which is, I'm sorry. That is an insane sentence, period. Now, the jury, members of the jury have now come forward, one of whom has said that had she known that he was going to face this mandatory sentence, she would not have found him guilty. Okay, like she would have wanted to prevent it from happening because she finds it unjust. Um, but let me give you more details on what happened. He said that he lost control of his truck after its brakes failed and that he tried to pull over to the shoulder to avoid uh, stop traffic, but there was already a semi parked in the shoulder. So it, there was really no good option in that case. Um, and also the crash happened as he passed one of the state's run, uh, runaway uh, uh, truck ramps. In court, the prosecutor, Kayla uh, Wildeman, uh, argued that either the defendant didn't catch it like he was supposed to, or the defendant drove on his brakes the entire way and caused them to be that way. And remember, we're talking about a 23 year old. And there are some issues with the company, the trucking company he was working for at the time. I'll give you those details in a second. But before issuing the sentence, Judge A. Bruce Jones said he did not want to see Aguilera Medeiros spend the rest of his life in prison, but added that he did not have the discretion to hand down a lesser sentence. Meanwhile, an online petition for Colorado Governor Jared Polis to commute his sentence has garnered more than 4.5 million signatures. And by the way, Workers in the trucking industry are also pushing this petition and they are threatening to boycott the state of Colorado in their delivery routes or their trucking routes if this truck driver does not get pardoned by the governor. So there's a couple of different issues here. Number one is the law and look, sometimes it drives me crazy when people get concurrent sentences rather than consecutive sentences. A good example recently is Derek Chauvin. He pled guilty to federal charges, so he got a big prison sentence. But it doesn't really matter because it's gonna be served concurrently, meaning at the same time as the prison sentence he got for the state charges. So there isn't that much point in convicting someone and saying you get no extra time for the extra offenses, right? On the other hand, when you make it mandatory that they be consecutive, you get injustices like this. Well, for each one of those counts, 
we're going to have you serve one after another, after another, after another sentence. That's how you get to the 110 years. No, you cannot have that be an ironclad rule that no one has discretion over. So Colorado's got to change that law, and now there's a lot of pressure to change that law. Then you get to the second issue, which is the case itself. Four and a half million signatures, I've never seen anything like that. That is a giant number of signatures for a very specific case. I'm serious, I don't remember ever seeing that many signatures on a case like this. And, and, and I think we need to juxtapose uh, the way the law is applied and how unevenly it's applied across the country. Now, I know that some states have stricter laws than other states. Um, you know, We're not talking about uh, uniform federal laws here. But when you look at what happened with Ethan Couch, do you remember Ethan Couch? Yeah, of course. In the state of Texas, he was driving drunk. Okay, driving under the influence, he was 16 years old at the time, crashed into uh, people who were stopped on the side of the road. He killed, I believe it was, four, yeah, he killed four people himself. And uh, this was the case where the judge didn't wanna give him a, a tough sentence because of his affluenza. Meaning he grew up in an affluent environment and didn't understand the consequences of his actions. So, you know, what can you do? I mean, don't sentence him to any any time behind bars. And he received probation, okay, for 10 years probation, no prison time, until he actually violated his own probation and then was given 720 days in jail. Ooh, 720 days. Okay, so Anna makes a great point there. And I had not connected those two cases, and you really should, because it gives you a sense of selective prosecution, right, and selective consequences. I mean, that affluenza case, of course, broke the record on irony. He, he, he's so rich, he doesn't understand the consequences of his actions. So we'll give him no consequences for his actions. Right. What? So, and in his case, he was drunk, he was negligent, he was all of those things. And, he, and four people died, zero prison sentence originally, right? In this case, the guy is not negligent. There was no alcohol, no drugs, no nothing in his system. And they came in with a weak sauce prosecution of he must have used his brakes too much earlier in the trip. And it worked. It and it worked. worked and he got convicted and he gets 110 years in prison. And gee, which one was rich, which one was poor? And which one got 110 years and which one got zero? Right, who could afford a defense attorney who could make a decent case versus in this case, we're talking about a Cuban immigrant. Uh, who clearly, I mean, he was a truck driver. He's not someone who uh, is suffering from affluenza um, or has the resources uh, necessary to uh, defend himself in court the way someone with the resources would be able to do. But I wanna also just uh, touch on the trucking company that this now 26 year old was working for. And you know, again, he was 23 years old when this uh, crash happened, okay? And um, Apparently, citing records from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, Global Trade Magazine reported in 2019 that 30 violations were reported out of 19 inspections over the course of two years for this trucking company. Okay, it's the Houston based Costello 03 Trucking LLC. That's the name of the company. And so uh, some of the safety violations had to do with the brakes on their trucks. Like the fact that this guy is, he just got sentenced to 110 years in consecutive years in prison for an accident. You think, you think he wanted to kill people? You think he wanted to crash into stopped vehicles on the highway? Like he's, he's not a, a dangerous murderer. It's insane. So they say, well, you gotta have accountability. Okay, then how about accountability? For the people who actually might be responsible because they weren't taking enough safety precautions with their trucks. Oh no, they're a beloved corporation. They're actually wealthy. Bingo. Yeah. So we can't do anything to them. They're wealthy and they're and they're the most powerful and special people in the world, corporations. Or you're an actual human being who didn't do anything wrong, 110 years in prison. And then the prosecutors brag about it. Yes, and I want to get to that because that's important. So the prosecutors celebrated his conviction and his prison sentence. So Kayla Wildman or Wildman, a deputy district attorney who worked on this case, posted a photo on Facebook of a brake shoe adorned with a shiny plaque that was engraved with her name, the case's number, and the words I-70 case. She and Trevor Mortitsky, 
uh, a fellow prosecutor in the office uh, made it for her as a gift. And so she later either deleted this or made the post private because it's not available to the public any longer. But of course, people had taken screenshots of it. So there it is, uh, there she is bragging about uh, what happened here. Get yourself a trial partner as great as Trevor. He turned a brake shoe from a semi truck into a memento. Oh, how sweet, very sweet. Uh, someone, unless he gets pardoned, will serve the rest of his life in prison for a literal accident uh, having to do with a malfunctioning brakes on a semi that honestly 23 year olds should not be driving in the first place. 20, 23 year olds aren't even able to rent cars. Like let that sink in for a second. I Anyway. Look, we've covered dozens of cases here where people with power, wealth and fame get no prison sentence no matter what outrageous thing they do. Corporations, they can kill almost anyone and get away with it. They have all the human rights and they have non-human rights, right? But if you're a regular person, prosecutors will put up a trophy for the injustice that they got against you and go, ha ha, we're so good at crushing the poor. Okay, by the way, why can't we have poor fluenza? Where we say, hey, you know what, poor people decided they were gonna treat Rich people with the same care and empathy that they've been treated that with. That can't happen in a country that's um, governed by corporate rule. Yeah, there's no way. Of course, if you tried that at all, the prosecutors would put up a monument after they sent you to prison for a thousand years. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.